Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're happy. I hope you're excited for the weekend. Oof, I know I... Am I... I don't know. At this point, I don't... I think the only thing I really get excited about on the weekends is that I don't have to worry about the routine for a little while. I like routine, and so I even don't mind Mondays because I'm like, okay, cool, back in the swing, doing the things. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to have the break and go, eh, I don't have to worry about getting the kids up. I don't have to think about what's being done when. So, yeah. Anyway, um, today I wanted to talk about the fabulous RuPaul. Come on. You know who RuPaul is, right? Like, <sighs> so I had seen stuff back in the day when RuPaul had a show, like a daytime show kind of thing. And I knew RuPaul from that and from general stuff, um, you know, drag queen and winning awards for that and just overall being a bombshell. I mean, but I signed up, well, my mom gifted it to us. It was like a buy one, get one thing for masterclass a little over a year ago. And so when she gave us ours, when she gifted us that, I took a look and I went through and I put a whole list together of the different things I wanted to learn and the different things I wanted to, I don't know, just consume. And I saw that RuPaul was on there. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, it was about, don't quote me because I don't remember perfectly, but it was something about confidence and drag makeup. And I was like, I'm curious. So I sat through that and not, not only was it was a bad thing, it was a great thing. What's, what's interesting is there was so much personal development and mindset and confidence and just awesomeness. And it was like the last, the last section, the very last section was about drag makeup and what it is like in the, per but not just like, this is how you do it. It was, this is the purpose of it. This is what it's for. And this is what it does for people. So I, although I was aware somewhat like on a small scale of RuPaul before, when I watched that masterclass, I was like, you're amazing. I love you. I would love to sit and have coffee or a drink. Pretty, pretty please. <laughs> Cause like the wisdom and the strength and the confidence and the love that this person can just exude is just, it was just awesome. And so then I was like gushing to my husband, like, Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And so many great quotes. And this person is so amazing. And Oh geez. And he was like, Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I totally know. And I'm like, Oh yeah. How do you know? And he's like, Oh, I watch RuPaul's drag race. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> he's like, how do you not know about RuPaul's drag race? And I was like, well, mm, probably because I haven't had cable TV in years. Like we would use streaming services and just kind of watch stuff here and there. I was going to school full time. So being able to watch TV was an extreme luxury because most of my time when the kids weren't, I mean, awake and needing food and needing attention was spent studying and writing papers. So anyway, the reason why I wanted to talk about RuPaul and the awesomeness is because I think there's so I think there's so much that we can get from the wisdom that is shared because oh golly specifically like I've been sharing a lot of RuPaul quotes this month because, and I wanted that to be a theme. I wanted it to be a thing. Um, it was very much on purpose because like, I think one of the, one of the ones he's known for the most is if you can't love yourself, then how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And then of course, you know, this is RuPaul's Drag Race. He's like, can I get an amen? You know what I mean? Anyway, so 
the first time I heard that was not from RuPaul's Drag Race. It was actually on this masterclass. And I was kind of thinking to myself, yeah, that's a good point. And it's something that I had been, I had realized and something I had learned because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't, you can't support anyone else. Like there's memes out there all over the place that are, th that are, that are saying things like, please learn from your problems before you go and have kids. Don't make them suffer for your past and your parents and your traumas. Like get over your, so you can be a good parent. And I mean, that's true to a good point, but at the same time, we're, we're going to continually evolve. So I don't think, I don't know that that's necessarily always going to be perfect. Like, I don't think anyone can be a perfect parent. I love you all. You're probably fantastic. Are we perfect? But that said, it doesn't mean we don't try our best and it doesn't mean that we don't love our kids. It's just that there's only so much we can do and we have to start with loving ourselves first because if we don't care for ourselves, if we don't appreciate ourselves, not only are we not going to have the patience, the mental ability, physical ability to do the caring for anybody else, whether it's our kids or a family that needs us or um, people at, at our profession, you know, at our, where, we, where we work. Um, there's, there's so many reasons why we give our energy and our attention. And if we can't take care of ourselves, then we're not gonna be able to give that the way that we can and the way that we should. So, I mean, that's huge. And there was something else I was going to say and I lost my train of thought. It's just what happens. But it's, it's just, it's one of the quotes I love the most. And there's, there's so many others in there about, and I can't remember them all verbatim, but there was something to the extent of living, um, living what's in your imagination, like how you imagine yourself you if you can live in that it's it's just one of the best dreams made real because so many of us too many of us sit and wish we could be this wish we could be that wish we looked like this wish we looked like that um want this want that can't appreciate what we have, can't see what we have, maybe look past what we have and want more. Um, and not from an ambitious standpoint, but from a negative standpoint, uh, where envy in a really bad way can propel us. And instead, if you can look inside to who you really are and who you really want to live as, and you just start working towards that, one decision at a time, one habit at a time. It's, it's wonderful. Sorry, the pollen is getting to me. So excuse me just a second. Much better. We were supposed to have all this rain on Wednesday. All this rain that I was really excited was going to wash away all the crap on my car. Not like I haven't washed it three times in the last week anyhow, but do you know what I mean? This stuff just flies everywhere. And even if your windows are closed, it comes into the ducts of your inside of your car. It's a nice sheen. And we've had the door open um, off and on so that the kids can just run in and out from our little mini backyard at our townhouse. And of course, like the stuff that's near the front gets a nice little, <gasps> the pollen, tree pollen has been really high. Anyhow, I just, if you're not familiar with RuPaul, if you haven't seen any of the quotes, you you should really take a look. If you haven't seen the masterclass, you should really take a look. There's so much, there's such a vibe of, but you are amazing and you have things about you that are just you. And that is what's great. Even in Drag Race, that's what it is. Like, I can't tell you how many times, and I haven't even watched that many seasons. I think I've only seen like four or five, but they're so often they're, they're, providing constructive criticism to these queens about how they just like stop trying to be something else like you have things that are you and we've seen it in x or y or all these situations and then other times you won't live that and that's what we like seeing we like seeing you because that's what's different and i think we're so too often caught up in 
I should have this kind of schedule because that's what everyone else has. I should have this kind of lifestyle because that's what, er what everyone else has. I should be married. I should have kids because that's the thing. I should or should not, whatever it is. And I know there's all kinds of things I'm leaving out and there's all kinds of spectrums of people that um, are being left out of this as well. And it's just, I'm just trying to be brief, but for real, like we need to, I wanted to look up some of the quotes. Um, because there's just, all of us are so different. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of us have similarities, but we are all different in so many really awesome ways and we just don't, we hide it because I think we want to be joiners and we want to be similar to other people and we don't want to stand out. We're afraid of standing out. Um, and for, for too long, that was me. And I can't tell you, like once I started just dressing the way I wanted to, um, and started learning to really not care or just work to care a little less every day, every week, every year about how someone else might interpret what I'm doing, um, for myself, like, you know what I mean? Then it just, uh, it was the most freeing thing. It was the most freeing thing. And of course I still try and I'm not the best, but I try to be good about inclusivity and diversity. And I'm still learning. Like I know I'm learning. I'm trying to be aware and the biggest hurdle of any of it uh, is is whether any kind of personal growth personal development is growing in the self-awareness realizing what you're doing realizing what you're saying and trying to be aware of that and i know i'm not perfect the whole point of what i share is to share the middle share the journey share the process that it's not perfect it's not pretty it's not always productive sometimes it feels like you're moving forward and then all of a sudden you're taking not even 10 steps you're taking you're, you just went back like 20 feet or a mile it's and then it's learning from that and trying to move forward there's i know that there are so many out there who have had far more challenges than i have and i could never even come close to understanding i just hope that I hope that everyone can just appreciate what they are and who they are and not care as much about what they should be or, or could be for something or someone else. What should you be for you? What can you be for you? That's what I think matters the most. So, um, oh, I wrote this one down too when I did the master class. We were all born, born naked and the rest is drag. I, 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 that really hit home with me because I know a lot of people who are not like big fans of makeup, don't like it, don't want to use it, whatever. And that's cool to each their own. But I can't tell you how many people when I've said, oh yeah, I think makeup is fun. They're like, you just think you have to wear makeup because that's what society told you. And I go, oh, you know, that's a good point for I'm sure a lot of people. Um, I, I just like makeup. I think it's fun. Um, I like how I feel in it. Yeah, but that's because society told you that in order to feel good and feel pretty, you need to wear this makeup. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's really don't tell me how I feel. Please don't because it's really not how I feel. Um, I like that I can transform my appearance, how I'm feeling about myself or even how I want to feel. This morning, I I was tired. Yesterday, I was really frustrated. I got that desk in and I wanted to put it together and get it all situated and it didn't fit. So even though I had measured and I took a look at the dimensions from the product, I'm like, wait, that doesn't make sense. We remeasured it and apparently the product was mislabeled. Ah, that happens. So, um, thankfully I had it though because the other one that it was going to fit in here with elbow. Oh, so annoying. But anyway, long story short, got another one. It's fine. But I was so frustrated because this is a small space. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a huge closet. Well, I've seen bigger ones, but for me <laughs> and my experience and my upbringing, this is a huge closet. This is about the size of 
a bathroom almost. Um, you could definitely fit a toilet and a sink and probably a stand-up shower in here. It would be tight, but you could do it. Um, so the fact that I can have my clothes on one side, I'm tired of my connection issues. Like, we even pay for gig over gig. Really, Verizon? Yeah, it's funny. Whenever we've called them, they're like, no, it's your devices. We're like, no, every device has this issue. Yeah, it's your devices. That makes no sense. <laughs> no sense at all. And don't worry, we have in-house IT. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have shelves and shelves and then a desk and a desk. And so it's nice. I feel like I have a good space. But I, um, I just, I was not feeling good yesterday. I was stressed. I was tired. The kids were having a day. And that can really wear on you. Um, or at least it does for me. And so I was really frustrated and really tired. And so I told myself, you have to get dressed tomorrow. For the most part of the week, like there's been a couple days where I've got dressed, but the most of it, for the most of it, I've been in like active wear because I've been um, doing like smaller runs and increasing distance and stuff and just kind of preparing and whatnot, exercising. And um, I've been doing a lot of cleaning and project stuff. So I don't want to go to the extent to, well, my set is kind of funky, but, and I pulled it up and pulled it down. So it's definitely pulled on. Anyway, the point is I didn't want to go to all the trouble. If I was just going to be doing this and getting sweaty and dusty and dirty feeling, it doesn't really work. So um, I told myself, I was like, you, you need, you need to do, you need to take care of you. You need to put on your makeup. You need to get dressed because you know, that just makes you feel good. Um, and it's not for anyone or anything else, but myself. So reading, we are all born naked and the rest is drag. I thought it was a really interesting explanation because he was, he explained how, you know, whatever you put on your body, however you show your body to the world is how you are portraying how you feel about yourself and what you believe you are. And I sat there and was like, yeah, I can totally see that. Because everyone has their own vibe. Some people are like totally into activewear. Some people are really into, you know, modern, fun, tight fitting clothing. Other people are really into just loungewear. Some people are like me and want to wear vintage inspired clothing or can actually find vintage and wear that or whatever it is, everyone has their own taste and that reflects who they are and how they feel. Even if you're having one of those days where you're like, screw it, I'm putting on pants and a t-shirt, I'm tired, I don't wanna do anything. Come on, obviously that's reflecting how you feel. You feel tired, you feel exhausted, you feel ugh. You wanna wear something that is gonna help make you feel maybe a little bit more comfortable, but it does reflect what's going on in your world. So I told myself, you haven't really done a whole lot this week. Do something with yourself. And I did, and it felt so nice. It was so nice. I took the time last night, even though I was really tired, pulled my hair back. Of course, I still had to pull it back when I had to make the new desk <laughs> again. Um, and, but still, it's just, it, it feels so much better. So I loved that one. Um, this is the one about your imagination. When you become an image of your own imagination, it's the most powerful thing you can do. I love that. We spend so much time as kids, as young adults, as whatever stage in our life. Not all of us maybe, but I know I do. And I know other people that do. And it's that whole at one point in life, I want to be this. And at one point in life, I want to be this. And at some point in life, I want to be this. It, it just, you have this image of what you want your world to be and how you would like your life to be. And when you actually start making it a reality, it's just, it's incredible. And it feels good. And it feels right. And the more you live that way, the more you give less fucks about others and about what they think and about whether or not you're pleasing somebody or you're irritating somebody or what have you, because you're just being honest and true. Um, so... This isn't so much like a quote that I thought about, but this isn't some, this isn't, this isn't something that I posted, but if you feel like you're being sabotaged, um, I feel like you're being sabotaged by your own inner saboteur. And that, that is something that 
I have been working on recognizing in myself. I will come on here every Friday to the best of my ability. I know I missed last Friday. I was so, that, that first COVID shot, it, it hit me. I was so tired and I was so out of it. I barely even remembered to post something like, I'm tired guys. And not many people may see it. It may not, I may not be eloquent. I may not be the most refined of individuals. I may not be the coolest looking YouTuber or influencer or anything like that. The purpose of me doing this is for me to grow, to me to share and hopefully just connect with somebody. I don't care if it's one person. I don't care if it's 20. I don't care if it's thousands. I just want to be real and I want to be true and I just want to help other people not feel alone. So I do my best to share things that I think might hit home for somebody, whether it's me or anybody in the world, because there are too many times when we feel disconnected, alone, lonely, depressed, frustrated, really happy, wish you could share it with somebody and have that upbeat, like excited, you know, feeling. And it's just, it's nice to know that there's somebody around that you can connect with. And I hope to be a person like that for people. So I wanted to see if there's anything else that, um, but yeah, the saboteur thing, that's huge. Um, What it says in your driver's license isn't really who you are. You are something much greater. I think that's really great for the simplicity of things like I am these simple numerical facts. We're so much more complicated than numerical facts. Um, so the overall commentary on what I'm doing is saying, hey, look. I get to create whatever persona I want to, and it's all up to me. And the truth is, we are all basically the universe, pretending to be humans for a brief moment of time. Fulfillment isn't over the rainbow. It's found in the here and now. Today I define success by the fluidity with which I transcend emotional landmines and choose joy and gratitude instead. <sighs> there are times when I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm so great I have my house. I'm so grateful that we have a roof over our head and we have running water and we have heat and everything. But oh my gosh, these kids are running around screaming. It's echoing in the small house that we have. It's really loud. I have to juggle with the kids sharing rooms and there's not enough space and oh, my gosh, get them out of my hair. Then there's other days. This is probably like 80% of the time or more when I'm like, I have a roof. I have air conditioning. I have heat. I have furniture to sit on. I have clean running water. I have plenty of food. I have the love of my family. I can cuddle with my kids who are healthy. What else do I need? Now, I appreciate that, but that is one of the reasons why I have this tattoo. So if you haven't seen the post before, my tattoo is the simplest way is just, it's, there's, a collection of three kinds of flowers. Um, and then there's three points of verbiage and there are a few wild flowers for my grandma Ruby who passed away, um, almost two years ago. And there's, um, some sweet peas for my grandma Marsha who passed away, um, a July of 2010. 2011. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and then there's a peony towards the top and that is to symbolize my mother. 
and it's not really in remembrance because my mother is still with me. It's me connecting to my heritage and the lessons these individuals have taught me whether they know it or not. My grandma Marsha was just like the biggest cheerleader for people and just no matter what was there was always ready to just be everything supportive. I love you. What can I do? I love you. It's going to be fun. I believe in you. I love you. Not even, not even let's try and solve a problem. Let's do this. Let's do that. It was nothing but I love you. And so we, they found my, my aunts and my mom found a poem of hers that she wrote and it said, and in one of the lines of text within that poem, it said, I love you still. And that resonated with me because no matter what, that's what she was. And then for my grandma, Ruby, I read a poem um, that she wrote not long after my father was born. And I read this at her service. And one of the lines in it um, summed up describing <clears throat> through previous text what she was seeing around her. And she described it as tiny glimpses of heaven. And I wanted that and remembering her poem to be a reminder for me to not only no matter what love my kids and cherish my kids, right? I love them always, love them still, ever, yeah. But tiny glimpses of heaven, the moments, at, like they grow so fast, they change so fast. And I wanted to remember to stay in the moments, stay in the now, just as Rue talks about, because there are pieces of just beauty and heaven all around us in the moments. We just have to be st more still and more calm to recognize it. It's not easy all the time, <laughs> but it's something that I want to do. Otherwise for my mom um, around the, around the peony is persistence and strength, no matter what. And none of these people are perfect. It's just, we can draw really amazing lessons from people. And my mom has been everything strength and determination for as long as I can remember. Um, so that's where really where I get that. That was, she was my biggest example of no matter what, just keep fighting for what you want. No matter what, just keep trying. You'll get there. Just keep fighting for it. So that's why I have that on there. And when I reflect on my past, it's not perfect, not perfect, but I have gone through and succeeded at the things that I set my mind to. I've been persistent and I've been strong when I needed to, especially when it came to my kids and caring for my kids with the previous marriage that was not cool. So anyhow, I think we'll leave it there for today. I've been going on and on a lot, but I send all of you my love, my hope that you will love yourself. <laughs> my hope that you will look up some RuPaul because, ugh, amazing. So amazing. So much love and appreciation for that individual. And they don't even know me, but I'm sure, and I know there's a lot of people who agree. So check out RuPaul, get some love, love yourself, know that you're amazing where you are. You're amazing in the future. You've been amazing in the past and you're wonderful and go have a really, really nice weekend. And if you're working this weekend, have great shifts. I hope people are nice to you. I hope that there aren't any crazy stressful situations and it all goes smoothly. And if you're hanging out and relaxing, I hope that it's a wonderful, relaxing and peaceful weekend.